I have the absolute honor. This is our last one today. The lady I have the absolute honor. Yeah, you should be running <laughs> to introduce. Started her career in, Aust in the Australian Army at 17. There's some love. There's some love. Woo! She was the very first female pyrotechnician. <laughs> I can just imagine it, too. <laughs> and entered the corporate world after her Army career. At 27, she burnt out but reinvented herself as a naturopath. For more than 25 years, she's worked as a naturopath and a professional speaker. She has published 12, 12 books and has spoken in over 13 countries. She prides herself in breaking new ground and lives her true self and encourages others to do the same. She is living her why in founding her charity, the Q Foundation, which brings hope, health, happiness to children in need. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Jeffries! take you guys up on being my girl, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> New York Times best-selling author, Dr. Steve Marboli said, there is nothing more beautiful than seeing a person being themselves. As a gay woman who came out in the 1970s, this quote really impacted me. January 1979. I was oh so young and oh so innocent <laughs> in every way. I was 17 years old, first time away from home. And I was so excited. I was off joining the Australian Regular Army, which I had wanted to do since I was 12 years old. I was marching on to the 1st Recruit Training Battalion in country New South Wales, Wagga Wagga. <laughs> Sir! This was my first real Posting. For years, I had dreamed of this moment. And when I marched on, there were 1,600 men and six women. I knew how to do what I was told. I knew the skills of being a soldier, and I was a great soldier. Mm. What I didn't know was how to be me. So when it was time for me to, to finally be out there in the world, I was lost. I was lost because I knew that I loved women. And not one or 100 or 1,000 of those men held anything for me. In basic training, girls, they've got abs. <laughs> shoulders and get around half the time with their shirts off, and they would make any centerfold. They had nothing for me. So 
So I had no idea how to express myself. And what I did was, I took on the only thing I knew. The thing was, this only showed half of me, one aspect. And the way I dealt with that was to turn to alcohol. And at 17 years old, I was an alcoholic. On payday, it was spirits. Two weeks later, the following payday, I was now broke. And it was $2 flagons of port or anything I could get my hands on. To cover up how I was feeling and being all I knew, I was as aggressive as any man on that base. I was so in your face and obnoxious, I terrified women. I know, seriously? <laughs> I want to play with them and I'm terrifying them? <laughs> the alcohol continued. And eventually, it led to blackouts where I would lose days and days. No conscious knowing of what I had been up to. The time that I had to, to literally kind of bring myself to the world, I had no idea how to bring myself to the world. I was so lost. I just stopped being myself. Eventually I left the army because being out in the army in the 70s was not cool. I left the army after three years and it totally broke my heart. I went off and I drove trucks for a few years and then I joined the pharmacy industry. That was the 80s. It was a time of big dresses. <laughs> <laughs> big shoulder pads. Oh, I forgot to show you an army flick. There you go, that was me in the army. Big shoulder pads. Big hair. I had an afro, just saying. <laughs> I had an afro. But it was also the time of big pharmaceutical companies big business lunches and big dinners that all revolved around alcohol. And I was good at my job. However, I didn't feel like a leader. I didn't feel qualified to lead in that position because I just felt like I didn't fit in. So I did a 180 and I put on another mask. This time, it was one of dresses. I honestly owned a dress just like that. I wore the high heel shoes, the afro, the whole bit. How well do you think I fit in? <laughs> Did I? But I was questioning my leadership because I didn't fit in. The drinking continued through the pharmacy days until one day it hit a point. When I went to the local camera shop where we used to do in those days was take photos to get developed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm that old. And I walked into the shop and the shop assistant looked at me with a look of pure disgust. And she laid my photos out on the counter saying, are these your photographs? And I had to say, the hardest thing I've ever seen in my life. And that was yes.
The photograph showed me the big butch dyke, the alcoholic, and one very lost woman. When I saw those photos, I knew I had some serious shit to clean up in my life. Who's ever been in that spot? Thank you. So at 27, I started to feel I'd been hiding from my emotions all those years. Had this mask on that no one was going to get through. And I never dreamt that the first time I would get to feel, the feelings would be those of disgust. Because I had no memory of what was in those photographs. So at 27, I took off that mask and I decided to be the real me. I got sober and I started to get in touch with my emotions. I started to feel for the first time in my life. I believe that everybody is a natural born leader. The thing is, most people will never walk into those leadership shoes, or they will, and they will be incongruent like I was. I believe that they have to feel you to follow you. Mm. And that my best self is my real self. In 1989, I went to a personal development course, I was sent there with work, and we were all given the job, or the, the task of, of being someone for a weekend, three-day course, where we had to be in character and dress up and, and kind of feel what it had been like to walk in that person's shoes for the weekend. And I was given Mother Teresa. I was sober by this stage, and I was terrified, mm. terrified. So the mask came out again, went and bought a sheet, chucked some lines on the top, walked around all weekend going, oh, bless you, my son. Jimmy, sorry, mate, there's not enough of these in the world for you. I love you, but there's not. <laughs> I was still in a mask. And at some time that weekend, we all had to go to the front of the room and share, just share, what it had been like to feel like being that person for the course. I did everything, everything, to avoid going to that front of the room. <laughs> I was terrified of speaking and talking about feelings. <laughs> that was never going to happen. Eventually, it was the last session of the last day, and I knew it had to happen. The trainer was cool, a bit David Woodish, in that he made me feel safe to just go to the front of the room, not have to say anything, but just to share how I felt. I went, okay, yeah, the little head chatter, I can do that, but nothing else. So I went to the front of the room. I stood there for the longest time in silence. Just looking around. The noise in my head was huge. It's saying things like, you don't have to do this. This is crap. How the hell does dressing up like Mother Teresa do anything to help you? 
you don't have to do anything that you don't want to. And yet I stood there. And eventually my eyes caught the eyes of a woman in the audience. Outside of this course, I knew her, and she was a high society woman. <laughs> and I'd always felt like she looked down on me. Down on me? Seriously? She was given the job of being a bag lady for the weekend. You know the bag lady? It's like they, they've, the lady pushes all her belongings around the street, lives on the street and all that stuff. So I'm standing in the front of the room and eventually lock eyes on her. And in a very non-Mother Teresa way, <laughs> I said, I don't feel sorry for people like that bag lady living on the street with nothing. I feel sorry for that woman being something that she's bloody not. And that moment, I realized that I was looking into a mirror. It was only through being sober that I could feel it. You see, when I was in the army, one of my army mates said to me, you behave the way that you think people think you should ha behave being gay. And I realized at that moment, so many years later, I still was. So I'd gotten sober and I was starting to feel, but I still wore the mask. John Maxwell says, a level five pinnacle leader. People follow you because of who you are and what you represent. The only way they can follow you and see what you represent is by feeling you. They need to know all of you, what's and all. I happen to love women. whether it was a guy you wanted at some stage, some travel, some children, that job everyone said you shouldn't go and get. We've all had something that people didn't agree with in our lives. And you put on a mask. My mask was Big Butch Dyke. And I'm to totally cool with that name, by the way. For me nowadays, it's a very affectionate term. <laughs> For Sarah, she's having a heart attack right now. <laughs> because she's not a lesbian, she's just married to a woman, but that's another story. <laughs> I was put on this earth to challenge you. I love you, lady. <laughs> the thing is, guys, my mask was Big Butch Dyke. What's yours? Hmm. Is yours being a workaholic? Is yours being a perfectionist? Is yours being someone who says yes all the time when all you want to do is say no? Today I can wear a dress like I did really recently. <laughs> Guys, don't just say you don't wear masks because people will see through you. They see through any mask like my mate in the army did. People need to feel you to follow you. Today I can wear that dress because I'm a feminine caring woman whether I'm in a dress or in a suit. I'm me. Straight up, no mask, and no longer an alcoholic.
And I dare you, I dare you all to let them feel you and to be real with your emotions so that you can truly lead because I can't tell you how damn cool that feels to be the real you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, that was my oh shit moment. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Take a seat. Wow. Come on, y'all, do the wow. Wow. Thanks, man. <laughs> There's so many things that I loved about your presentation. What I love most was that four days ago we met physically for the first time. Yeah. And I saw you do a portion of that, and I coached you. And you implemented every single freaking thing I said. Yeah? Yeah? Didn't she? Why wouldn't I, li why wouldn't I listen to you? <laughs> Seriously, if right. I... Amen, yeah. amen. And, and great leaders are great learners. Absolutely. You know, you want to be a great leader, be a phenomenal learner. You are a phenomenal learner, which is why you freaking nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. You, so, so I just got to go over a couple of things yes, that I love. I, I just got to go over some things that I really love. So I love that, um, so they're madly in love with you before you started speaking. Yeah, which right. is more pressure. Right, right. Um, yeah, Thanks, no, guys, absolutely, it is. It, it, is. <laughs> it, it really is. When people have, like, if this is going to be great. Well, what if it's not? You know, can I be good? So they love you, and you came out, and you, you, you're, up, but you're, you're always up in energy, and you came out and you gave it to us straight between the eyes, right? And you disrupted what we know about you. Yeah. And it takes a certain kind of leader to be willing to disrupt the expectation. So I want to celebrate that, and I want to call you guys to that level. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Because... It would have been really easy to stay inside the how we know you. Oh, God, yeah. I was <laughs> terrified doing that, guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because you are disrupting. So you were, a, you were risky, and, and to, to David's point, that that uncomfortable zone, I mean, you just started right there. Like, I'm not going to get to that point. I'm going to start right there. Um, you were engaging. You did content elevation. Your voice went up. Your voice went down. You took me into your head. You screamed out in your head and told me what you were saying. You showed me the picture. You took me there. You held me. I, I like the places you, ch you chose to hold back a bit. I like the places that you chose to push forward. I like the names. I like the fact that you acknowledge anyone else in the room that might be of the same preference. They might not like that, but here's what I like. <laughs> You honored your audience. You honored your whole audience. You left no one behind. You. Like you, your extended tribe, your intimate tribe, the tribe who thinks like you, knows like you, and the tribe that's getting to know who you are. So I love that. May I coach you on some areas? Yes, please. Okay. Very excited. Let me tell you why I'm super excited. I'm excited to coach everyone, but I'm very excited to coach you because I just saw you apply what I coached you last time. And because you applied it, where do you think you were if on a scale from 1 to 10? Where do you think you were six days ago, and where oh. do you think you were today? Uh, if I compare it to six days ago, I, I went from a six to a ten in comparison. Have I still got more? Y yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's why I'm excited. Lots more I can do. Because you'll apply it immediately. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, your content was intense, and so you have to give us an emotional break of the intensity by saying you're very easy for you to be funny. Mm. Very easy. So, you know, the part where you said, I was like, really? I think you said something like that. Take me a little more into the laughter so that I can breathe. Okay. <sighs> yep. Right? You guys, right? You guys feel like, okay, yeah. this is deep. We'll get a drink tonight. It's all right. Right. <laughs> right. And so, and so. Non-alcohol. Right. T take me, take me. You see how easy it is to do that? Yeah. That's, and that's so play me. with that some. Sure. Play with that some because it's easy. And then take me right back down. Because when you do that, when you say something along the lines of, um, I, 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 
here I am in the army. I love being in the army. I've thought about it since I was six years old. And yet they weren't ready for me. They didn't know how to celebrate me as a soldier. You just blew past that, by the way. Yeah, I know. You blew past that. <laughs> that they, was in the notes. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know how to celebrate me. They didn't know how to embrace me. They called me names. No one gets to call me a dyke until I call my damn self a dyke. Are you a dyke? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, baby! Maybe not. <laughs> I love you. Right. Sorry, I couldn't right. help myself. Sorry. Right. So, so. Jen, put it down. Put it down. <laughs> you want to stay longer? Put down the help. So, <laughs> focus, guys. I'm serious. <laughs> so, 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 but do you see how I took a hard, a yes. very difficult moment? Yes. And then, and, and the, the laughter, you guys, have to be a one-liner because it can't distract the message. Yeah. Does that make sense? It just gives your audience a chance to go, <sighs> yeah. I'll give you another one. Yeah. Of all the people, I'm Mother Teresa, right? And then you show the picture, right? She believes in honesty. I lie like hell. She doesn't drink. <laughs> I need a drink. She believes in freedom for all. I just want to get everybody. She, do you see how you show the, yeah. di the di dichotomy? And so I did. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> and so... Good. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> What's really know. scary, she actually, she, she's saying exactly what was in my head. Right. <laughs> right. And so you go, so I did what I knew best. I put back on my mask. Now, make the relevancy to me, Jen. Yep. Because the story was about you and it was really good, but I needed the relevancy again, you guys. Are you guys noticing how I'm going to keep pushing you to ping pong and play with your audience? Yep. How many of you have put on the mask? Now open it up to me because my mask is in your mask. How many of you have put on the mask of not needing any help? Raise your hand. Come on, if it's you. How many of you have put on the mask of um, saying yes to everyone when you really want to say no? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. How many of you have put on the mask of I'm not good enough when you know you're brilliant? How many have put on the mask of, I'm brilliant, and you know you're clueless? <laughs> See how I got the laughter yeah, again? Gotcha. And so all of a sudden, I made mask bigger than me. Yep. And now I brought the relevancy back. So give me some laughter yep. in, in that deep, deep valley, because you took me in the dip, yep. and we took our real estate in the dip, and that's okay, but pop me out the dip every now and again yep. so that I can breathe. Yep. And then... Make sure you keep the relevancy going back and forth so you get me constantly looking at me in this. I love the title. I love the title. The Dyke to Dress one? No, I love. The other one. No, the feeling. The feeling one. I love yeah. that title. Dyke to Dress was the test right. title. No, you started with the feel, <laughs> uh, yeah. leaders. You have to feel to be fo they you have have to feel. They, they need have to, to feel, feel you to follow, follow you, you. Right? Yeah. Thread that all the way through. Yeah. And then at the end, say, so I just got a question. You feel me? <laughs> right? Yeah. Just real lightweight. Gotcha. And if you feel me, then I'm happy if you decide to follow me. And the day I feel gotcha. you, I'll follow you. I love you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something like gotcha. that. Perfect. You know, kind of anchor it in the yeah. message. Give her another round of applause, you guys. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. 